Great. So good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for uh, attending this session. I'm delighted to be here, and I'm here with some of my colleagues that are based in APJ. Myself, I'm based in London, um, but as I said, very, very delighted to be here. So what we're going to be talking about today is the possibilities with HP Digital Print. And it's going to build on some of the concepts you've already heard from this morning and from the presentation just now. So I hope you enjoy it. OK, when we think about packaging, um, its primary purpose really is to do two things. is to protect, and more importantly, these days, when you're trying to get consumer attention to buy your brand, it is to promote. And it actually becomes the last moment of truth when a customer is on the shelf, ready to choose something, or on the online, ready to click to buy something, that it's the packaging that actually makes them choose one direction or another. And there's been a life cycle of packaging. It's evolved. So years ago, you would have a, an engraving many, many years ago, and that would signify the ownership of, of something. You would then go through the years and advertising and design become more important and, and as you develop, trust and emotion starts to build. But where we are now is in a world of emotion and love because people want to feel special and that resonates around the world. It doesn't matter where you are, they want to feel special. And what digital printing allows you to do is make people feel special. It's one of the ways. And particularly for this generation. So in cu some cultures, it's called the me, me, me generation. I think in China, you call it the 90s generation. It's all about me and, and what I would like and when I would like and how I would like. It's very, very focused on me. And digital printing enables you to deliver this experience for people in a variety of ways. And I think this quote was quite, quite interesting. It's very challenging, but it's quite interesting. So the company that actually enables the ability to talk to each individual as an individual of one will win, which is a very bold statement to make. They will win. And if you go back to the presentation from Simon a moment ago, this idea of building on the century experience, the brand promise, all those elements need to be working in tandem in order to win. And digital print will enable you to win by addressing some of the touch elements as well as the site, but touch very importantly. And I think the statistics on the DM versus photocopying it or scanning it and putting it online is an example of how important the physical sample is. One of the things that we, we work on in a different sector is education. And when we've been um, doing surveys with young children and you ask them, would you prefer to look at a book online or in a printed book? They choose the printed book. And it's a real surprise, but they choose the printed book, even in this day and age. There are some trends that are happening in the industry. So regardless of what you and I might think, there are things that are happening. So the statistics show that the life cycle of a product is declining. So the brands are having to have more thoughts, more ideas to make the life of that product live longer. They're extension strategies. How do you actually keep this thing making money and growing attracting new customers, gaining market share, being profitable while it does it. it it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge. So the life cycle is, is falling, so you have to be more and more careful about your creative strategies to, to make it live longer. And batch sizes are falling. In most industries, whether it be printing books or whether it be printing packaging, like the uh, batch sizes are falling. And this is largely because of the upward swing. The number of SKUs is increasing tremendously. Partly because customers want choice. So whether it's an individual personalized package or whether it's a versioned package, the number of SKUs is increasing. 
because the consumers are becoming more sophisticated. You know, they would like their sauce to be with uh, mint and garlic rather than mint and tarragon. And that's what they'd like. That's what we as producers supply. In terms of the upswing as well, and I know it, it happens here as well as everywhere else, is the counterfeiting. A real concern. So counterfeiting and undermining the brand promise is a massive problem. And digital print can actually help with this. Packaging market in general worldwide is huge. Digital printing will not address the total packaging market. Digital printing needs to be looked at for two specific areas. One will be the short run and the other will be the value add, whether it's versioning or customization or personalization. But it's an enormous market and it's one that we've not been able to address before because we haven't had the digital presses to address it. We do now. So last year, we launched a new series of platforms, printing presses, that are based on HP Indigo, which is a proprietary technology. It delivers the quality of what you're used to today with conventional print and better. And it enables us to go into new markets, which is the packaging market, because the format of the presses is bigger. So before, the sheet size or the roll size wasn't big enough to address flexible packaging or certain cartons or corrugated, but it's big enough now. So the reason why we're here today is because we would like to share this news so that you as brands become aware of what's possible. It's very early days. The install base is growing with the new technologies in terms of the bigger formats. We have the existing formats already all over China, but the bigger ones are just starting to come now. But it enables you to look and service your customers in a different way because the technology is now available. And lots of big brands use it today. So the HP Indigo technology is very unique in the number of colors it can print, the fact it can print brand colors, spot colors, it can print on virtually any substrate. And so this gives brands like yourselves confidence that if they want to do a job on a digital press, everything will be as it should be and the brand promise will be with her, upheld. So in terms of the areas that are really important, one is the short run. And in some geographies, the short run is shorter than others because of the competitive nature of the geography. But there will be um, an element of run length that is, doesn't make sense to do conventional. doesn't matter whether you're using variable data or not. It's so short, you may as well do it um, digitally because conventionally it will cost a lot of money. The turnaround time, the speed to market, if you could all have a look at your bottles. So these bottles, I'd like you to, to pick them up and then I'd like you to compare it with your neighbor's bottle. And you'll see two things, three things in fact. One is that your name is printed on your bottle and your neighbor will have their name on or if they registered very late, I think it says hi honey if I remember correctly, um, but if you registered a couple of weeks ago, it has your name on it. It has a unique number on it, which is also on your bag. That unique number is because the image on your bottle is unique to the image on the bottle of the person next to you. So every single bottle in this room has a unique image that is related to the number that's printed on the bottle. And in total, I think we printed 1,600 bottles, but there are four unique 400 unique designs because there's 400 delegates and you've all got multiple bottles. But this design uses a software which is an HP Indigo software called Mosaic. And the design and the printing was done last week and it was delivered here. So fast turnarounds uh, is what digital will give you. And the Mosaic software, if you'd have done this in a conventional way using designers, would have taken days to come up with 400 different designs. This took hours. 
because it takes a template of, I think, 23 images for this one, and then the software will mix those images to ensure that everything is unique. But what is common is the colors and the theme of it. So when you actually put them in line, they don't look that, that different, but they are subtly different. And you can have the software be more adventurous to make them much more different, um, or they can be subtle like this. And you can see the Coca-Cola bottles on the right. So Coca-Cola used the Mosaic software in Israel, um, and they took this um, live, and, and they launched it in Israel. They went a step further in that not only were the Coca-Cola bottles unique, but they had the unique number on, like your bottles, and then consumers could go online and they could order a T-shirt with their unique pattern on, or they could order a phone cover with their unique pattern on, or a bag with their unique pattern on. Everything was completely individual and unique. Nobody else could have the same. In the streets, we used our Cytex presses to have billboards with the unique patterns on. So the whole campaign was extremely uh, exciting, vibrant, and unique. Sorry for the image here. It's a, it's a low-res image. I didn't realize. So just coming back to the, the left-hand side of the chart before with the low volumes. So this company here, based in France, um, launched some new products. And they were new entrants into the market, and it's baby food. And they wanted to launch a number of products in one go because the retail chains don't want to list you if you have less than five products. So they launched 20 products, 20 different recipes. Uh, they used the Indigo Digital Print for flexible packaging um, for these new products, and then they got them in to store. This morning's presentation was very interesting because it said in China only 2% of new product launches are successful. So one of the things that HP Digital Print can do is it allows you to test market and launch either online or in the store, and then out of these 20, see which are the top 10 sellers, and then you can change the other 10 and launch another 10 or 20. So it allows you to be very flexible and very agile into the market. This was a nice campaign done in London in Selfridges at Christmas. So when the Paddington Bear film was launched, um, Selfridges has these um, labels made for golden shred marmalade. Each one has got uh, Paddington Bear on it, and it was exclusively done for Selfridges. Because Paddington, when it was first created, was based on a bear that was in the Selfridges. So they have a relationship historically. Nutella, you've probably seen these, but you can get personalized labels. And this one is interesting because if you see how it's been taken to market, it doesn't affect the supply chain. So the Nutella um, jars are in store with the normal label, and then Nutella has put this display with your name on it, so then you choose your name and you put it on top of the existing label that's there. So you don't need to interfere with the supply chain. Iron Brew is a Scottish drink. Um, and what they did was they took the top 57 Scottish tartan clans. Each clan has their own tartan. And they printed the 57 clan tartans as the labels of, of uh, Iron Brew. Each clan has a name, so McDonald or whatever it might be, which is also printed on the top. And it was launched for Burns Night, which is a big celebration um, event in Scotland in January. And the sales were more than 20% above normal Iron Brew sales because immediately people felt an association to the clan and the community and wanted one because it was their clan. This morning, in one of the presentations, one of the biggest selling um, products on the internet I saw was pet food. I think the first one was dogs and the second one was cats. 
In America, this is a digitally printed pet food bag. So Doris, who actually works for me, <laughs> went online and ordered some pet food for her dog. You choose the recipe that you would like. So there's a template of recipes for the dog. So she chose her recipe. And she ordered her dog food. It was sent to her online. Their normal dog food, similar dog food, called ProPlan, is $11.99 for the same size. This bag was $24.99. Just because it was the recipe that Doris chose, and it has Doris's name on it, and the dog's name on it, which is Clancy McNally's. McNally's blend. So people are prepared to pay double for things that they've created that mean something to them, and yet it's dog food. <laughs> you know, it, it's incredible what, what people will do. But digital print enables you to meet those, meet those needs. This is an example from Japan. So you can go online, templated... Um, versions are available. You upload the images um, that you would like to upload, and you upload the text that you would like to upload, and then the beer is sent to you directly to your home. And of course, this costs more than if you bought that beer in the store. But you can imagine for a 50th birthday party or a celebration or a wedding, this type of thing, to have your message, your pictures, your family and friends. You could do one for each of the people coming with their own photo on it. You know, it, you can really, you become the creative and people love that. They think it's exciting and they'll pay for it. They pay more. This is another example of whiskey. And again, different supply chain. You go to the store, you buy the bottle of whiskey, you then go online and you personalize the label, which is then sent to you. You stick it on top of the old label um, and you give it, in this case, to my father for his birthday. Uh, and it becomes a unique gift for them, something to treasure. Again, apologies for the image. This is um, in China now. This is the uh, website. So it's not fully launched. This is a test website, but if you go on there, you'll see it. So these are personalized Durex boxes. And you can put messages on there. You can put your horoscope on there. You can put your name on there. You can put whatever you like on there. You order it online. It costs more. It's sent by the, inter by the internet. How many people saw or heard of the Share a Coke campaign with their names on? Hands, hands up so I can see. Yeah, not that many. Okay, so, so um, Coca-Cola came to us and uh, they asked us if we could work with them to do something very different. We talked about brands earlier. So what Coke wanted to do, which was very brave, very exciting, was they wanted to put individual names on the Coca-Cola bottles. And you can see that essentially it takes away the big Coke um, brand name. That, that's around the other side. So they, they, they changed the look and feel of the brand by adding something that wasn't the brand. This campaign is not personalized. What it is is customized. So what they did was they took the top 150 names in the chosen geographies. So they've done it in uh, Japan, they've done it in Europe, they've done it in Australia, they've done it in America and other parts of Asia Pacific. And they printed the top 150 names and then they put them through their distribution process and put them into store. So then when you went to store, you would look for your name or your friend's name and the whole campaign was share a Coke. So you would buy one for your best friend and give it to them, and, and you shared a Coke. It was a common experience. For the retailers, it was a nightmare because the shelves were a mess with people trying to find their names. Um, but for the consumers, they loved it. Sales went up. It was replicated in other countries. Over three billion labels have been printed for this campaign. It's huge. 
And that's not something you would consider when people talk about digital print. You think three billion labels on a, on a Coke bottle? That's not what I would expect. So what, what this was was a hybrid execution. The base stock is printed conventionally, and the names are overprinted with the HP Indigo digital print in spot color red and printed on top of the pre-printed labels. And then it goes back into their supply chain, put on the bottles, and sent out. So a fantastic use of hybrid technology between the two, two areas. Huge impact. When you're thinking about digital print campaigns, it'll be interesting to see what the next presentation says, but women are the people that are four times more likely um, to purchase food and drink products with personalization on them. So when you're thinking about who to target this to, women are definitely up there. <laughs> Children also love anything to do with it, but it's women typically who will buy it for other people. When you're thinking about the supply chain, we spoke earlier on about uh, only 2% of products are successful. So if you think about the supply chain down here, you know, there are supply chain cost reductions to be had because you can test market. If you think about that example in France, they launched 20. If they'd have done it conventionally, they probably only would have launched five. I've got a, a brand in the UK who wanted to get a new product to store quickly, so they just printed the first two weeks digitally, while those two weeks were used to print the conventional main run. And because the look and feel of the ink is the same as conventional, they sit next to each other on the shelf and you wouldn't know. So the time to market is really accelerated. So you can do these market tests and promotions. Imagine if... Uh, I don't know, you, you, your brand is chocolate, and the price of chocolate on the commodity markets goes up, and you need to change the ingredients quickly. You could, ring, you could print the next run digitally, potentially, and then go back to conventional. So it, it can be very flexible how you use it and when you use it. And then down the other end, you can use it for the personalization, the variable data, as, as I said. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the brand security and the trust element in a moment. Counterfeiting, very serious problem all over the world. Um, these are figures that are estimated on the impact not only in revenue, um, but on jobs uh, and on safety, particularly in the pharmaceutical market where people you know, potentially could, could use counterfeit um, products there. So it's a, it's a very big pro problem. And for, for legitimate brands, they need to protect their brand promise. Because if the customer has an experience that isn't what they're expecting, not only will they not buy it again, but they'll tell everyone else not to buy it again. So one of the things that we try and do with um, our solutions is obviously meet the needs of the brands uh, like yourselves. And one of those ways is, is to use these track and trace um, elements through um, the cloud. Digital printing technologies can't print the fine text which allows the, uh, the scanners to, to look at this through the, the systems. This white example here, again, will show you some of the track and trace and protective security elements um, that Indigo Digital Print can, can enable. And by doing this, because it's digital, every single one can be different. And not only that, but you can change it every single day if you want to, or every single week. So when you have issues about brand protection, um, these are things that you can look at. On this example, with the wine labels, the label, the big label, is printed conventionally, and the little label, the circle, is printed digitally. Because actually, in this example, the volumes of that wine would not make sense to print it digitally. It's more efficient conventionally. But by putting the little label on, you then get the brand protection um, and uh, the ability to manage security through the supply chain. So again, one of the things that the brands ask us is that's all very well, but what if we want to do a worldwide campaign? How do we do that? which is exactly the question that Coke asked us. The, the presses that we have are sold to our customers. 
Our customers are printing companies, um, and they're in a variety of different fields, whether it be labels and packaging, or commercial printing, or book printing, or sign and display printing. Um, and it's these customers around the world that we work with when brands would like to execute on a worldwide campaign. And the Coca-Cola example uh, is exactly an example of that. There was a lead customer in each region who then linked with the other customers in order to print the volumes that were needed to get them into store fast enough. So some practical considerations when you're thinking about piloting with digital print, and hopefully you will think about piloting. But it's not a standard order. So you really need to think about what is it you want to achieve, because digital print is not for every product and segment. It, it's for specific products and segments. It's for specific consumers. We, we saw that women is probably you know, a segment that we want to go after. Your internal supply chain need, may need to be worked on. You know, when Coca-Cola first started to, to talk about what they wanted to do, you can imagine the supply chain implications because the converters were saying, well, how's this going to work? And, you know, they pre-printed the rolls, then it came out of the supply chain to the digital printers, it was overprinted and went back into the supply chain. So where there's a will, there's a way. You know, it can, it can be done. And technically, you know, virtually anything is possible from a technical perspective. Because the print substrates you can print off, some of those that I'm handing around now, you'll see they're extremely fine. Um, but these go through the web presses. So technically, we can probably solve most things. Some of you with uh, primary packaging will need to do some food testing for food migration. But on the whole, it should be fine. If the baby food can, 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 uh, can work, I'm sure, sure others can. You need a local champion within the brand. So somebody needs to say, you know, we should do this because we're going to increase sales, or we should do this because the market in this region is so small, we just need shorter run lengths, or we're going to do this because security is a real issue. We have to investigate that. So somebody needs to champion it because it's not easy. And when you go to your procurement department, they're going to say, yes, it's very expensive. It's cheaper to do it litho. <laughs> you'll say, yes, but that's not the point. The point is, I want to do something different because I want variable data, I want security, I want personalization, whatever it might be. And we're very open to doing a trial. So my colleagues and I are here this afternoon, this evening. We're here tomorrow. We're very happy to talk to you about trialing something to see whether it works for you in a region with an idea. I think this was sort of touched on in Simon's presentation, but today, you know, everybody is bombarded with so much in terms of advertising. You don't take it all in. What you do tend to take in is a printed piece of material. It, it must be something that's just in us, but we take it in. We like the touch and the feel of packaging. And as I said, you know, packaging is the last moment of truth. And one of the guys that we work with is a creative director. He used to be at JKR in London. They're a global agency. And, and I, I just liked his phrase, you know, packaging is the last interruptive media, but use it wisely. You know, use it carefully. Use it in your marketing mix. It should be a real consideration. A lot of money is spent on advertising just by diverting some of that money to pay for the incremental cost of digital printing could actually be the difference between sales growth and stagnation or loss. Thank you. If anyone's got any questions, I'd be happy to take them now or later. No? Okay, thank you.